So then, Warframe Telecon has just ended and we had to digest quite a lot of information in such a short time span. So the main focus of this video is what is next for Warframe and on screen will be the segments we are going to break down one by one as these updates roll out from October to next year. So let's go ahead and kick things off with update 34 coming this October 2023, the abyss of the gaff circulating around Halloween Knights of Nabarus. We finally have our newest Warframe that starts with a big capital D. Guff will be coming with her own horror themed dojo room, a crypt if you will, in which we will be crafting her within with a back in narrative from grandmother Intrati from Deimos explaining more about the lore of the Goth and how she got her name. The Goth also brings a headless horseman style being absolutely faceless and I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually quite excited about this release that we can learn more about the goth and her abilities this September with these next dev stream. Sticking within this update, everyone's favorite Warframe is going to get a cheeky rework. Hi, droids. And oh my God, it's about time. I cannot stress enough to you guys that I'm almost more excited for this than any of the newer releases because revisiting the old content and breathing life back into it is something that needs to be applauded more these days. So let's cross our fingers for a healthy rework and join me in our daily Pablo prayers. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Pablo. The Thank you, thank you. I love me too. Also coming next update is the companion rework and by god this one has been extremely needed for a long time. We all have companions and the simpleness and effectiveness of them has always been up in the air for the bay ever since I even joined Warframe. So for now there isn't an awful lot to say on this reading from what we can see here we do know that there isn't going to be any more permadeath so that's a great quality of life reassurance for us but the other two points such as making them sturdier and gameplay impacting their return to battle are going to have to be explained more in the next dev stream but this update is already looking great so far. He then went on to mention about rough edges and grind walls, basically revisiting old existing content and touching them up so they aren't as grindy and easier to either obtain or complete. Now this is definitely one that could sink under the radar in appreciation as if you have already done these types of grinds then you may not really notice them as much. But for newer or returning players, things such as focus acquisition and quests like Yorelli's Wave Rider quest are going to see a better quality of life update to them to make sure they're not as frustrating as they have been for so many of us. Update 34 will also add in better visibility options to help highlight enemies. And I'm sure this one is going to be paired and themed with the most recent damage number change. And from what I can tell, that's been pretty well received. Cleaning up the game and making things easier to identify. Every content creator's bitrate dream right here. And we also have the new auto melee. Basically holding down the melee button will now become the default to pump out your damage instead of just mashing your buttons. And they also mentioned a new extra mechanic to spice things up with melee, but we won't know much about that until after the next dev stream. I heard Grendel. Also, somewhere along this update, we should be seeing the likes of Grendel Prime's release with a brand new Zylock Prime and his signature weapon, Master Prime. I mean, I'm clearly not excited for this one. <laughs> and finally, you can all stop spamming it. But cross save will be rolling out in small iterations over the course of this year, starting from the Abyss of the Goth update onwards. So if you have any friends, it's time to tell them that D-Day is upon us and it's time to mesh this community together like the sticky toxic substance that we all are. So this upcoming patch is definitely going to be an interesting one. For me, I absolutely adore quality of life and I absolutely adore reworks almost more than new content because we deal with a lot of this stuff and we have been dealing it for quite some time. Let's breathe some life back into this game and add some more refreshment. Also coming this year and the main focus is going to be the Whispers in the Wall update and oh my god this looks awesome. Now there is going to be no exact release date just yet but from what we can see within this trailer and from what we have been told this is going to be the next continuation of the Warframe saga since from after the new war. 
Now, it's still going to be surrounding the mysteries of who is the man in the wall, but by bringing us to a new territory that seems to have existed within Warframe all of this time, we never had a way to access it. A door? a portal, if you will, to a new area underneath Deimos. And from here, we will explore more about Albrecht Intrati's rich history inside his labs and witness all of his experiments whilst also trying to fight our way against an expanded library of Necromech faction, even with some of the new enemy Kvats as well. But will we have to do all of this with just our Warframe weaponry, you wonder? No, we won't. And you know what they say, knowledge is power, so reading books and not touching grass has now become our strong suit. You're a wizard, Harry. Grimoires are now a new type of weapon that we can see added within this update. And what exactly can we do with them? Well, we're not 100% sure just as of yet. We do damage. But I would love to go and hear your theories about these. I mean, let's be honest. I know you guys really want to form these books, right, guys? <laughs> right? From there, we also go and meet a brand new enemy faction named Murmur. And it looks like an amalgamation of things. To, but truth be told, the more that I look at this faction, the less I understand it. They appear a swarm like and utter the same tone of words that we can hear from the man in the wall. So it looks like they're going to be sticking around and we'll be facing plenty of murmurs throughout the new quest line within Warframe. So when all is said and done and we have progressed further into these labs, we'll be looking to wake up the sleeper whilst also being introduced to new characters such as the original Lloyd, one of Albrecht's, I don't know, close friends if you want to, but mostly a worker if you will. And Rebecca did mention something about waking the sleeper if we could transference into something bigger. Now, whether or not this was a joke or a teaser of what's to come from here onwards, I'm unsure. But what hit next? Well... Warframe's future is also Warframe's past. Coming in 2024, we are revisiting old constructs on what defined the very existence of Warframe's beginning by including a familiar title many of us know, Dark Sector. And with that comes Arthur. And with him comes some incredible kick-ass music by Nine Inch Nails. Now, I won't be playing that for this video because, you know, copyright. Uh, but this is genuinely exciting. The tone of the modern age reloading what looked like an AK-related series of weaponry, some of the original Warframe suits, Warframe Skana, and even some of the very first prototypes of infested enemies. We're going to be battling our way throughout this update to find Dr. Atrati, but it looks like we will continue to meet our maker, and by god, that smile is creepy. So Tenacon's Warframe news wraps up to me as exciting, mind-blowing, and weird. It's new content, it's a new direction, it's revisiting old content, and again, it's weird. Did I mention that? And you know what? I'm all for it. First impressions obviously play a huge role leading into updates, but how it's actually delivered on release is going to be the key factor on how well it's actually received. So I do want to go and take a quick moment towards the end of the video to say a massive thank you to Digital Extremes for flying me out to Tenacon and putting up an absolutely wonderful experience I will forever cherish. From all of the other content creators that I spoke to, to all of the people who recognized me, to the developers I got a chance to chat with, you guys made this experience what it was. If you ever get the chance to visit Tenacon in person, I can say confidently, it's quite the amplified experience in person in comparison to watching online. As always guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Share with me your highlights of Tenacon by leaving a comment. What are you most excited for? And whilst you're at it, what are you most concerned about? And if you did enjoy today's video, then hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Come join us for future videos. Until then, I'll be catching you guys again later.